Hello there and welcome back to Worms and Warriors. This is Grand Tactician, the Civil War, and we're heading into episode 12 of this playthrough. The date is April 17th, 1862. We started this campaign with the Confederate States of America back in 1861, the summer start. So we started in July. We've been going for almost a year. Uh, so a quick overview and then we'll get straight into the campaign. As you can see here, we've driven a nice wedge up into Missouri. We've driven a wedge into Louisiana and Indiana. Louisiana? What am I talking about? It's because I saw Louisville there. It made me think of Louisiana for some reason. Anyway, it's Kentucky, of course. We've pushed up into Kentucky, kind of got control of this very, very southern edge of Indiana. We've got a force here at Evansville. Only 3,157 men at a Polk. Uh, they're not really going to capture this place, I don't think. Well, I mean, we might capture it, but I doubt we'll hold it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to send these guys up on a little rampage to work their way through Indiana, maybe towards Indianapolis, see if we can cause some sort of reaction from the Union. Uh, to the east then, we're fairly well in control of Virginia, we've won a bunch of battles here, we've just won a, a battle there in the Shenandoah Valley at um, Winchester, Stonewall Jackson did a really nice job for us in the valley, outnumbered but held a nice defensive line. So we're holding over here. Ewell is recovering his readiness. As you can see, they're battered. They had a big fight over at Washington, which we failed to take due to the lack of readiness and having to move troops over into the Shenandoah Valley. But we've got Longstreet recovering his readiness, and we've actually got a Charles Clark attempting to take Washington. I don't know if he's going to be able to do He's only got 2,500 men. But Longstreet is on his move on his way over there to help out. But he's only got 20,500 men, so we'd have to see what the Union does about that. We also won a nice big naval battle here at Hampton Roads. We've opened this blockade up again. So we've got a bit of supply flow, flow coming through into Virginia, which is nice. We're working on increasing the Navy strength. We're working on Army strength. We're pretty close in manpower-wise. We've got almost 135,000 in the field. He's got 165,000 with many more to come, I would assume, because they've just unlocked their Militia Act 3 or 4, whichever it is, their three-year contracts. We've got a slight advantage now. I've just noticed here that their commanding general is Charles Sanford. I don't think I've ever seen him on there before, but anyway, that's that's fine. Uh, Lee, obviously ours. Yeah, so that's that's where we're at. We've took 30,000 casualties, he's took 54,000. So, I mean, not a million miles apart, especially not when you consider we've fielded quite a few less men. Navy tonnage, we're actually only about halfway behind him, so he mustn't be doing that well with his navy. But then saying that, we have just captured a bunch of ships and sank a few in that battle at Hampton Roads. We've taken... Uh, what do we get here? We, we captured a sloop of war, we captured a frigate, which is a really nice prize, uh, a schooner and a couple of steamers. We just got these back at port here repairing. When they're done, we'll get them out. Another sloop of war is ready as well. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet, but we'll put them somewhere. So this is our James River squadron, the main fighting squadron, the ones who just kicked the arses of the uh, Federal fleet at Hampton Roads. But they are a little bit battered, so we're going to let them recover. Finances are a problem. BBB Plus, our POW camp is overcrowded, but we are expanding capacity on that we've got some supply issues in the west that's kind of the main problem we have over here so i had wanted to push up onto Cairo with joe johnston he's here somewhere there he is 25 and a half thousand men but as you can see we've got no supplies we've got nothing to eat um and now there's no supply depot at Cairo either so i had thought we'd nip over here and we'll capture the supply depot but there's nothing there so we can't do that so I'm either going to have to build a new depot here, which is not good news because it costs a lot of money and we have not got any money. Quick look at the finances. We've got 23 million in the bank. Our credit rating's BBB+. Plus. It's just not, it's not looking good. So I'm going to, I mean, much as I hate to do this, I'm going to drop military funding slightly. Not too much. We're going to stay at about 15 million just to see if this helps any to recover our finances. It probably won't do much, but it'll, it'll do a little. Let's, let's see if we've got anything ready here as well market reform we haven't really got that many markets if i'm honest not really we do have two and a half million in agricultural funding but i am holding on for that uh, for farm mechanization which we're almost there with in fact we'll be there any moment in fact in addition once that's done we're going to be working on propaganda which we're, we're getting close to that'll increase loyalty in some states uh, so state support sorry uh, in some of the states where we need it uh, and that's about it, so let's just get started here and see what this episode brings. A quick little note that I've recruited the battery that was requested, the Kiwi battery, so the, for the uh, New Zealand viewer. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't find your comment anywhere, but I, I, I can't remember what you asked for the unit to be called. I'm going to call it the Kiwi 
heavy artillery. I did rename these already, I think. Maybe I've renamed the wrong unit. But anyway, there they are. With a 24-pound howitzers, heavy artillery, as heavy as we've got anyway. Uh, we'll switch out maybe to some rifled artillery when we get some. So uh, anyway, so the Kiwi heavy artillery for our friend from New Zealand. They'll be going in to support their Australian Janissary brothers, <laughs> the Anzac guys. Anyway, so uh, let's keep, let's get going here. Let's see what's happening. We are also, we're waiting for this Mil Militia Act 3. Once that's done, at least we can get some recruits and we can beef up our numbers a little bit. The West Virginia militia is coming at us. Maybe we're going to see another fight in the Shenandoah. So if the West Virginia militia is coming at us here, and they've got two other armies up here as well, does that mean this is all open? We've got Magruder here with 3,590 men. I know, I know it's not a huge army, but why don't we push these boys up towards Wheeling? And maybe see if we can burn down this depot up there. Could be a disaster, obviously. <laughs> it's possible. Let's see. They are powering along here. They fancy another scrap with our band Stonewall. I wish you would pick up ammunition. We're right by the depot here, aren't we? Where is the depot? Don't, don't even tell me they've managed to burn that depot down somehow. The Harper's Ferry depot. There's no depot there, honestly. Absolute bullshit. Anyway, while I'm while I'm here at Washington as well, we've transferred Charles Clark into the Army of Northern Virginia for now, so they can be part of this army structure. I can't believe that this depot's gone here. Honestly, that's just... Is Ewell's readiness going to be up to join in this fight? Possibly not. If there is a fight, I mean, we'll see. So we will have to build a depot here, one way or the other. So, what's going on here? They were flashing for some reason. I think they're withdrawn because they, maybe they tried to cross here or something. We've got the Army of Tennessee moving. I think it's because we're here. We've also got these boys coming across the Army of Ohio. I think this is all in response to Magruder. Eh, not Magruder, uh, Polk in there. So I'm going to push Joe Johnson up towards Cairo since he's all on the move. Sterling Price hasn't really recovered readiness, but he is picking up some provisions from the depot that we captured, which is nice. It means we can push up on St. Louis, maybe. Although there's another army up here as well, the Army of Southwest Missouri. And we'll simply pull away with Polk if he gets engaged. Wow, oh, unless these guys are actually going into Missouri. Which is kind of what the aim was, so we'll see what they do. We've lost sight of the Army of the Ohio. I'm presuming they're coming for Polk. I mean, it makes sense. And if, they, like I say, if they do, we'll just pull out. Same as if they come at price, we'll pull out. We'll not contest this. Well, we'll not contest it unless numbers seem feasible at all. Uh, two brigades with low morale, a total of 1,035 men. You will... We've got four brigades with low morale. What? 6,621 men with low morale. Due to recent retreats, low supply or low fighting spirit. Well, come on. Can't be serious. Who's got low morale? Being slightly low on supply should not impact like that. Anyway, let's see what this battle brings. Not sure why Yule's in charge either. Surely he won't be starting on the field. He's, the, he's further away from them. We're fighting Brigadier General Pierce. Some pretty impressive sideburns on that guy. Yep, so we're starting with Jackson's force in the field. We're fighting for Millwood Pike. And we're facing somewhere around fourteen to 15,000 federal troops, so I'm not really sure what he thinks he's going to do here. I mean, we'll see if he can do anything good. So the cavalry here, 240 men under Fitzhugh Lee, so they did lose quite a lot of men in the last fight. Maybe that's one of the units that's struggling here. Yeah, they are flashing. Stuart seems okay. I wonder what the other unit is. Maybe that artillery that got a bit battered. So D.H. Hill's division is going to be deployed here on the right-hand side of this road. I suspect they're going to come down one of these 
roads. I mean, I'll, I'll put somebody over here as well just to guard that flank. Walker's division, I'm going to deploy on our left side. Kirby Smith division. They're going to be our far right defense. We're going to deploy our artillery division up on this hill. Ah, it's Mahoney who's, uh, who's flashing here. So this is obviously, he was defamed, I never replaced him. So, boys, I've got a perk. Okay, so this is the basic deployment then. We've got Frost with his guns up the front, backed up by Loring's Infantry Brigade in some decent defences here with uh, pa we've got parapets with some obstacles in front of it. Reinforced parapets. Uh, then in the centre, we've got Hill's Division. That is Gordon's 1st Georgia Regulars, the Florida Brigade, uh, Cummings Brigade, then the 4th Brigade, Hawes, Buckness Brigade, and Fulkerson's 3rd Georgia Brigade. So this is our front line. In reserve, uh, let's move Jackson up a little. In reserve, we've got Stuart's Cavalry, which, I mean, we'll probably not be using. We've got Mahone's tiny uh, battered brigade of 793 men. We've got Yuji. They did quite well in the last battle. I'm going to keep them back, though. Well, actually, let's put them here. Just in, They're ready to move out and plug a gap. We've got Pender slightly behind the line. Uh, just to, again, plug a gap if we need to. Let's get started and see how this goes. Starting in 0930. Nope. Millwood, that one. The enemy's retreating from the field. All right, well, what was the point in this? So he's pulling back anyway. That, I've got four minutes. So I set that up for nothing. Ten minutes of my life, I'll never get back. <laughs> okay, victory at Harper's Ferry. I wouldn't even call that a victory. <laughs> 13 captured. So, I mean, we picked up some stragglers somewhere, I guess. Well, that, that was a complete waste of time. Polk is low on supply. Yep. When we've got an army of Illinois powering down here as well. Uh, 2,600 men. But, I mean, I'm sure that'll go up. Is it my imagination or does this map look very wintry all of a sudden? Maybe it's just imagination. We still can't do farm mechanization, even though it's two and a half million to fund it, and we've got two and a half million in subsidies, so why is it? Alright, so Long Street has now entered the, the game at Washington. Got to keep an eye on everything. Army of the Cumberland, that's new as well. I didn't see them before. So I think these guys so what have we got here? Army of Tennessee, twenty thousand men. Army of Mississippi, twenty one thousand men. And Army of the West. I think they're all converging down here because we pushed up into Missouri. And they don't like that one bit. We've got to keep an eye. We've got to burn this down. Where's the depot gone? Oh, there. <laughs> I thought it disappeared again. We've got to burn this depot down if we need to pull out, though. For the moment, though, it's keeping us supplied. We're down to 49% support in Missouri. 56 in Kentucky, so that's still going down and down. That had gone back up to 70 odd after they uh, opted to join us by a secession. We do have some weapons on order. We've got some more Lorenz rifles, rifles arriving in 39 days. Mississippi rifles are due soon as well. 28 days. Rebore muskets, 64 days. Uh, 28 days for some planes rifles as well. So. This is one of the reasons why we're a bit short on money, because I ordered a shit ton of weapons, basically. But then hopefully we're not going to need any more weapons. We've got 5,000 Augustine rifles arriving as well in 20 days. So in 20 days or so, we're going to have plenty of new weapons. Uh, or at least some new weapons, so a few thousand new weapons. West Virginia Militia's coming at us again. Just having a quick look through Ewell's busted uh, command. and lots of, lots of casualties in this. They fought a big battle. Um, the brigades are very small. So I'm not sure, maybe we will have to look at furlough on a couple of these units to regain strength once we get some more reserves in, but not at the moment. I don't really understand how the Union Army of West Virginia managed to pull back and then come straight back forward. I mean, if it was one of ours, he would lose readiness immediately. So we've got enough troops to draw an infantry brigade from South Carolina. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just a small 1,500-man brigade, but we, we really could do with more men in the field as soon as possible. They'll join McGowan's new force, McGowan's Corps, which is in Cooper's army. Oh, this is what happened. So I renamed this army accidentally the Kiwi Heavy Artillery earlier. Okay, so this was the, we we'll just call it the Virginia Army. It's got Magruder with the Army of the Northwest and then McGowan's Corps. 
it did have Charles Clark, but we've moved him over. Okay, so Jackson is on the move. And we're in contact again. Let's go again. If I'm going to set this battle up ready to go. If they retreat again, I'll just cut back to the campaign screen so you'll not see all this, the other garbage. Another complete waste of time. All right, so again, 13 men captured. What the hell? So this better not to keep happening because this is pretty annoying. Got some ships constructed. Let's have a look. CSS Tacconi and the Tuscaloosa. All right, a couple of brigs. Excellent. Ah. Oop. The Union's got military too. I'm just going to pause it a second because our... Sea Raider Squadron is now ready. Just in time for these brigs as well. Let's get them in there. Maybe a steamer or two as well. This is a half decent fleet. So this is our Sea Raider Squadron on the Sems. I'm going to send these down here to blockade one of these trade nodes. If it works, I've never done this before, so I don't know if it's worth doing. But let's try. We'll, we'll try blockading the British one. Get him down there and we'll do that. Obviously something the Confederacy engaged in quite a lot was... Sea commerce raiding via privateers mostly or largely. Uh, okay, so we're taking Cairo, Illinois. We've got nothing to eat here, that's a problem. And we're also in the process of taking Evansville, but like I say, that army. Oh, there they are, Army of the Ohio. Okay, well, that's interesting. I didn't expect them coming this way. So presumably they're going to come off the river before our, they engage that fleet that's there. Or did they encounter the fleet and now they're pulling back? I'm, I'm not really sure. They are flashing today in retreat. They must have bumped into the fleet on the river. So Jackson's picked up supply. Uh, I guess maybe just generally from the IIPs. But he's back at full supply, which is nice. Oh, the West Virginia militia is coming again. This has got to stop. But I can't let them through, of course. As soon as we've moved out of here, Columbus has flipped back to the Union. What's going on? Why, why are we in the Battle of Washington? Oh. That's why. I'm going to take it to a battle. I'm not having that worked out by the AI. So again, we've gone with a really basic defensive position. I've got Winder and his artillery up on this little hill on the flank, so they've got possibly going to give some cover and fire. We can't get any shot over here anywhere at all. Uh, I've put Green with his cavalry regiment on our right flank. I mean, obviously, if we need to, we'll pull his artillery away. Our left flank's covered by Jones' division. Hill is uh, covering our left centre. Pickett, the right centre. And that's about it. Let's get going. I'm going to get these boys... On working on some parapets, but let's just pause it for a second because I'm going to give out long range orders to start with. In fact, I'm going to march the 3rd Brigade under Baylor, 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 I don't know, over to the right flank. Some pretty impressive stars going on here for the 1st Australian Janissaries. I think that's a crack unit, let's just see. Crack unit, yeah. Got Micah Jenkins, battle experienced, Queen's Own Volunteers with their perk, of course. Iron Discipline, Veteran Unit. So these, these guys have got some pretty good experience. Volunteer High Tiders, two stars as well, and Iron Discipline. Rono Colonists getting there for their first perk. Hampton Roads Coastal Artillery. Been involved quite a lot. Spot somebody. Is that one of our couriers? Coming from Lee, of course. Uh, we're starting on a minor defeat. Uh, his morale is way higher than ours because he's fighting on home ground. Enemy casualties, none of 30. What the hell? Like, what's going on here? I wonder if the game's bugged somehow. We've had two false non-starts in previous battles. And now we've got this going on. Where we're fighting 30 men. Oh, the enemy's retreating. Honestly, this is, the, so this is the third time in this load that this has happened. What's the deal here? 30 men. Battle of Fort Washington ended on April the 22nd with a Confederate minor victory. What the hell? Three times. 
just verify the files. I always verify the files before every time I load this in because just to avoid scenarios like this. Is, is this a bug? Is, what, what the hell is going on here? It's pretty frustrating, whatever it is, and it doesn't make for a good episode. I know the video is probably only about, I don't know, 10 minutes long at this point, but I've been playing this for nearly an hour now. And nothing's happened except for three non-battles. Victory at Washington, way. Hey. Oh, we didn't even capture anyone that time. So if I take this to the fight now, what's going to happen? Auto-resolve assault. We can't even assault, I mean... This is into an auto fight with Charles Clark in command and we're outnumbered in the fight. So, and then here comes the West Virginia militia again. <sighs> What's he doing? What on earth is he doing? Okay, uh, okay, stop, 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 stop. He's going to Lake Huron. What the hell? What the hell? What's going on here? Uh, if, this, if this carries on, I'll have to. I'm gonna have to cut this episode short and possibly even the whole campaign because I mean, this we're gonna lose this fight over here. It's already down to forty nine percent because it's the, like the AI is cheating us because we're outnumbered, so you automatically end up losing the fight. Even though clearly, if this was a field battle, I'm pretty sure I could whip his ass even with Charles Clark in charge. What's happening? What's going on with this game? We're back in this fight here with Yule. I'm going to auto-resolve this. Uh, there's no way I'm fighting that again. Victory at Winchester, yeah. No shit. The problem is he's retreating towards the south, okay? I'm going to leave Yule there by himself. But I'm going to transfer a brigade from Jackson's command. I'm going to move Pender across. He's going to leave you with 14,500 men. So we've got, we've got our three-year contract. We've still got... I mean, what is this? What on earth is this? I mean, quite clearly the game is bugged here, I think. I'm going to send Jackson up here towards this battle because I just don't know what else to do, to be honest. We've taken Cairo, Illinois, but we haven't taken any sort of supplies. So I'm going to have to pull these boys back towards supply, just because they're just racking up casualties. But yes, we've definitely got these guys powering over here towards West Virginia. I'm going to go for the Impressment Act next. It's going to cost us support, but it'll lower the cost of supplies. We're on BBB. Anything we can do to cut some costs is going to be required just now. We'll do a bit of recruiting since we've got our troops with it. I mean, recruiting costs money, of course, but you know, we do need some more troops. I won't go crazy with recruiting. Let's bring in a couple of infantry brigades. So Lee is still just wandering around up here. What the? The siege in Washington is still going on. You? Like just, what? 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 What the hell, man? I mean, honestly. can do farm mechanization. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Army to Ohio is up here now, powering across still 27,000 men. Polk is still not taking Evansville, Indiana. He's only been there for about a month. And we are very happy to suck troops down down this, this area. I mean, that, that seems just fine. Alright, so can someone explain this to me? How can this even be? How can he be... How can he be engaging the Army of the Potomac up there with Ewell's Corps, which is at Winchester. 32 hours away. 
I'm going to leave the episode here. I think this is glitched. I'm going to have a look at it offline, and I'll see what I can figure out here. This is ridiculous. If I retreat with Lee, that means he's going to retreat as well. That means uh, you will retreat, and that's going to open up the way for the West Virginia militia to come in. This all looks like contrived bullshit from the AI to me, because this is... Like, what? what is this? Why is he even going up here? What was that all about? Why did we end up fighting 30 men at Washington when we were engaged with uh, the Army of Northeastern Virginia as well? I'm presuming the 30 men were the garrison from one of the forts, I, I guess. I mean, that's the only thing I can really figure. But, like, what the hell is this? Why, why would these be engaging with them? Because Lee decided to go for a stroll through Maryland and, and, and Pennsylvania. Like, what the hell? Anyway, I'm going to leave it here because this is... There's clearly a problem here, and I'm going to see if I can resolve this off camera because this is no good. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Whatever you're doing, if you're new here, not every episode is like this. Trust me. Uh, go and check out some of the other battles and some of the other uh, videos I've got going on on this series. Uh, and this is, I don't know. I'm just baffled. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Turn it off for now. <laughs>